Welcome to Cute Widgets and More. In last week's episode, we saw our framework for cute model views, item delegates, painting themselves. In this episode, we'll see three non-trivial delegates of real-world applications. So the three delegates are first, there is a progress bar, and I must admit that it was only after I implemented and almost recorded this that I learned that there is such an example in Qt, but mine is still slightly different. Second, there is a delegate that renders HTML text. Usually your delegates can only do trivial things or trivial text, but you can get them to render HTML. And third, there is a delegate which shows both some data, for example, an amount, and an error indicating whether that's an increase or a decrease and a percentage value. So revenue this year was up by 23% to 1 trillion billion euro dollars. The solution or the example of this delegate, you can see that over here uh, where it, it's progress of a project. That's where it came from in KDAP at least. And uh, this first project didn't have any progress. It wasn't started yet. Then there's one 10, 25, and 75%. And then there's one that very unlikely went over time, namely 110% of the budget has been used for this project. The delegate itself is actually using the framework from last week, namely the Q widgets and more item delegate. And you can see that it, all it needs to do is implement this paint internal method. So let's have a look at what it does. First, it gets the data here. And if the data is not valid at all, then return. Just don't paint anything. Otherwise, it will take that data and convert it to a, to a double. And uh, if that didn't go well, something wrong, just don't paint anything. And here is the logic for actually figuring out the color. So if it's less than zero, that doesn't mean negative. It just means that the project hasn't started yet. If it's less than one or 100%, then it's green. And otherwise, it's above and then it's red. My view could have set alternative or alternate, uh, alternate rows, I think it's called. Uh, which means that every single row will be painted with a different color. And if that's the case, then for this particular cell, I do not want to see that color through. That would just look weird. At least that was my conclusion when I implemented this one. So I simply fill the whole rectangle given option.rect. And do observe that the option.rect is the rectangle where this delegate is. But it's actually not 0, 0 at the top, unless it's the very topmost leftmost cell in your queue table view. Otherwise, it is actually uh, according to zero, zero being the topmost item in your queue table view or queue tree or queue list. So it's somewhere down there. And that's also if you somehow actually implemented a delegate and you, you just said, okay, paint at zero comma zero, whatever, then you'll see all your cells painted at the topmost leftmost part of your view view. Okay, so what I want is a bit of border around. So I'll take my rectangle here and I'll just uh, add two pixels from the top, from the left, from the right, and from the bottom. That's what it says here. And then I will paint my item. And if the value is outside of uh, the range here, I'll just uh, set the width mm, to this here. So actually, no, I say if my value is, it, it could be less than zero. We failed out on that one, but it could be more than 100. But in any case, otherwise, we will limit the width. As you can see up here, it's 75% long and 25% long here. I'll paint the, the rectangle and I'll draw this text here aligned, centered in my rectangle. I admit that wasn't groundbreaking. On the other hand, it is nice to see simple things too, so you don't just see super complex things. The next one I'll show you is slightly more involving. This Delegate is about rendering HTML text in the cell. So, so far, if you tried creating a Q item delegate, you would have a Q painter, and that one doesn't paint uh, HTML. For that, we need to get our hands on a Q text document. It looks like this. And just to show you right away that it does actually work, here you see a list view. It has four rows, 
a regular row with just a italic text in it, something changing the font and or the font size and boldness, it seems, and the color or whatever. And here is a two paragraph and even a table in there. Let's look at the model to start with. The model is relatively simple. It uh, changes uh, or the row count is just four. And then here is the HTML code for each of the, the four rows. And I'm even changing the font size uh, depending on the row. So as you saw, it's getting bigger and bigger. The delegate itself is subclassing from Q widgets and more delegate. It's implementing the paint internal as we've seen before. And it also implements the size hint because otherwise it will not give enough size for the items in there. Let's get over to the actual implementation and see what it looks like. There isn't all that much. It's actually a surprising little amount of text in here. So the first painter and save and restore, we've seen that before. I am setting, I'm, I'm creating a QText document. That's the one that knows how to render HTML. I set the default font to be option.font. Remember this Q style option view here is by the framework being uh, instantiated with lots of information from the actual index. So it goes to the index and ask it for its font and so on. So I set that here. The HTML is set onto the document by going to the index and asking for its string. And now I'm ready to paint. And this code here, I call draw context, draw content on my document here, giving the painter and giving the rectangle to clip to. And uh, unfortunately, at least as far as I can tell from looking at it, the, the draw content here always assume that it start at position zero comma zero. But remember, the coordinate that we get in through this option dot rect is with zero comma zero being the topmost leftmost part of the table. So that's not what I want. Therefore, I translate my painter simply saying, okay, option rect left, option rect top. That is to be my new zero zero. And then my rectangle that I'm clipping inside is this rectangle that could start with zero zero and has the width and the height. And this way I'm now changing it down to be exactly the cell. The size hint needs to tell the view that each cell has a different size, and that's what it does here. I, size hint is not supported by the framework that the Qt widgets and more framework, so there I need to do myself this set option as we saw last week. And I asked the text doc, I created the text document again, set the default font, sets the HTML, and now the text document can retell, can tell itself size and then two size. I guess the size here is a, uh, is a size uh, if it indeed was, and but I just want it to be regular int size. It goes without saying that these, that the delegates are called rather often. So I think that if I ever hit, and I, it is in my production code, and I don't have a problem with it in my production code, but if I ever found that I had a bottleneck in one of those table rendering with HTML, I think I would be very wise in caching some stuff in here because setting up a text document is not a trivial feast. It's not, it's not cheap. Uh, so doing it in a delegate might be rather expensive, but at least for my use cases, this works very well. So the last example of a delegate is slightly more complex. As you can see in the screenshot, it's actually showing financial data. So the numbers for 2021 and the forecast for 2022, and you can see income and cost and total, and each cell contains three data types, or three data sets. The actual amount, so the forecast is 100,000 euros. This is uh, down by 17%, which you can see from the arrow pointing down. And uh, well, that is the, the three data types that you see in there. That is painted in each and every single cell. And if you notice, uh, you'll also, if you look at it, you'll notice that the arrows are actually aligned as is the text. So look for 2021, the cost is 200% up. And uh, 
the 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 text there is uh, aligned on the right and the arrow is still standing there in the middle of course this is just a trivial example because cost being up by 200 percent should definitely not be highlighted with a green arrow that should be a red arrow while costs being down by whatever should be a green arrow but that's slightly beside the point in this example Let's start at looking at how do the model provide the data. So here there's just uh, six data sets that are relatively simple. You can see 100,000 euro down percentage value of 0 0.17. That's 100,000 down 17% and so on. So these, this is just the data hard coded for this example here. The way that it's provided to the view from the model is via a number of custom roles. So we have value, that's the 100,000 euros, an arrow and a delta. And you can see whenever we're asking for information, data is looking up in this data structure up here. And then it, if it's the value, then it'll go and return the amount, which is uh, in a money instance, return that. It could have been some other percentage or some other value it could, for example, be a percentage instance. So uh sickness if that was a, a thingy that we were recording could be down by five percent rather than down, down by five euros um so that's the 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 value being returned here the arrow is just a regular qpix map being returned and the delta is an instance of a uh of a percentage value being returned header data nothing spectacular there either I'll let you look at the percentage value class yourself. And let's turn and look at the delegate. One thing we need to keep in mind before we start looking at it is that these things were aligned by row, but the delegate, they just paint the cells by, by each individual cell. So we need to go through the model and query for each of the elements in the delegate, which means that the delegate now is storing state. This is again a Q widget and more delegate subclass. I'm overriding paint internal, paint internal, and I'm overriding size int just as we, we did in the previous example. And I have this method recalculate cell width that is calculating information about what is the, the, the widest of my, my text cells up here. What is the widest of these things so that it can have enough space for each of those. And also, uh, Please do enjoy this uh, setup if you don't already do those, those using. I have found that to be very nice. Instead of having a hash from int, comma, a hash from, from int, comma, int, I now have a row, comma, int. I now have a hash from column because I'm using this using column and comma with. So this reads out more easily than with the ints all over the place. Of course, it doesn't do any difference to your compiler, but it does so to your coworkers. Let's go over and look the, at the recalculate cell width initially. This method is the one that will run through my whole model and calculate the width. And you can see it runs for each of the columns. It runs for, and of course, hmm, well, hmm. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm slightly torn because there might be columns in there that do not participate in this game. And then I think, I think I would have preferred now that I think about it to have one delegate per column and then simply not have this about columns in there. But again, in my use case, each column was exactly stuff like this. So potato, potato, I guess. I run through each of the columns and I run through each of the roles of value uh, and delta. So these are the two, the value and the delta. These are the two that can actually change width. And then I run through each of the rows and I find the maximum for the value and for the role in here, I go and ask, can you give me the bounding rect for in this particular uh, index for row comma column and uh, for the role, either value or delta and convert that to a string. Can you give me the bounding rect and then go and fetch the width and find the maximum of this. And now I store the maximum width in this column for the for the value here and the maximum width in this column for for the uh, for the percentage value with this in place my size hint is relatively easy now 
if my width is empty, if it hasn't been calculated yet, uh, then do calculate it. And I do so by creating one of these Q style option view myself and calling recalculate width. That's the method up here with this one here with this model and the font metrics for this style option. And then I simply figure out what is uh, which index, which cell are we talking about? And I get the cell data structure from that. And the cell data structure, that's this uh, data structure that we had in the model over here. Over here. That's this uh, cell data structure. I get that one. And uh, I go and ask for the just full of cell data structure. That's, of course, uh, this one that we have here. That's my cell data structure. I guess I should have been using a, a, a bit more using that. Hmm. Anyway, I go and get that one. And then I ask for the, the width of the cell, the width of the delta. So that's the maximum width of this, uh, this column here, the maximum width of this column, plus 12. That's the image that is hard coded in here for some reason. Uh, I add two paddings. There's a padding here and there's a padding there. And I add two margins. There's a margin there and there's a margin there. And that is the width that I return in my size hint and the height. I'll just let the delegate itself figure that out by calling into the super class. Finally, we need to go and look at the painting code. The painting code looks like this. I'm saving and restoring as typical. This time I'm setting up the clipping rect. So you can see if I go and resize, it will not draw on top. Had I not clipped, then I would simply have been drawing on top of this row next to it. Might have worked out well because it likely draws from left to right, but you never know. Better safe than sorry. So I'll set up the clipping rect. If the width has not been initialized yet, then do initialize them by calling recalculate cell width. The rectangle is this rectangle that I got up through the option here and I'm ready to paint. So I'll start out getting the, the value for this cell. That's the 100,000 euros here. Convert that into a string by the mechanism that you saw last week where we register this two string method. I will then adjust the rectangle by simply taking the margin over for you. It's like this take the margins over from the right uh, and no adjustment otherwise. And I will set the width to the, with the column width. And with that, I'll draw the text and I'll draw the text in this rectangle aligned vertically and aligned horizontally to the, the center. That's why you'll see that uh, the text is uh, aligned centrally here. I guess it would have looked better if it was aligned to the right, but I guess I'm just showing you that I can align it in the center. Now paint the arrow. I call the set X on my rectangle, taking the right of the previous rectangle. So that was the, the rectangle we had up here adjusted a bit. Take the right of that because I know the width and plus the padding. So just the right here plus a bit of padding and draw the pix map. Finally, set the X to the right of or whatever here. Uh, and the width of now I'm drawing the delta column, draw the text and this time aligned to the right so that you can see it aligns to the right over here. Restore and you're done. So this was three non-trivial delegates. The last one surely was very connected to the model, which is okay. I mean, sometimes delegate are connected to the model. I can't see any other way of actually getting those cells painted as we saw there. It was nice working between the model and the view. And you might actually notice that the model didn't even have a answer to, to, to text or uh, to display role. It was only through custom roles. Again, that is perfectly okay. Obviously, if you were to use that delegate in some other context where it was needed for a display role, say exporting to a text file or something like that, it wouldn't work at all. But then in that situation, you could have adapted it to also work with text roles. I'm Jesper Peterson. You've been watching yet another episode of Kid Widgets and More. Do let me have your thoughts. 
If you have some cool delegates to share, to share them below. And uh, otherwise, next time, we're going to turn our attention to delegates that not only paint themselves, or, well, delegates that are used for editing.